I want you to do also offer defense of international institutions at this moment as it relates to holding the state of Israel to account. I have, ju I have just one sentence to say about that, is that the entire world wants a ceasefire and the United States and Israel and, I don't know, the Micronesia and whatever else don't, right? The entire world takes a very different view, unfortunately, to the people in this room and to Douglas and Natasha. Is that, is that uh, the International fire? Criminal Thank Court, the International Court of Justice, the, uh, the UNHCR, UNICEF, uh, Doctors Without Borders, Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, Oxfam, uh, Christian Aid. Yep, you're booing. What does it come to when you're booing Oxfam? What does that tell you about yourselves? You're sitting here booing Oxfam to defend Benjamin Netanyahu. Let me just deal with something you just said. You talked about debunking propaganda. First of all, you can't even get Israeli propaganda straight. The Israeli government's own security agency, Shin Bet, investigated what you just said and said, no, we found no evidence that workers from Gaza were involved in the October 7th attack. Oh, oh Shin Bet are lying. They're booing Shin Bet, the Israeli security that. service. Got it. So uh, they did a they did a poll sort of at the beginning of that debate asking sort of who the audience were, what they thought. The debate was about anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism. And it's very clear that the majority of the audience were, were Zionists. Um, and this is something I think we've come to see over and over again since October the 7th, which is the moment an institution criticizes Israel or sort of says what it's doing in, in, in Gaza is, is horrific and many innocent people are dying and uh, they're struggling to get food in there. People try and sort of delegitimize the institution. There is no reason why a Jewish state should not be able to live side by side with another Arab Palestinian state. Okay? The only, and I'm glad that Gideon brought up Oslo, the only reason that there is not an, a Palestinian state today, not the Palestinian Authority, which runs most of the West Bank, or Hamas that was given the Gaza and then decided to do well, we know what they decided to do with 18 years of international funding from this country and others. Not that, but if they were given another state, there is no reason if they brought their children up to love life and to live by their neighbors, if they educated their children into learning instead of hate, there is no reason why they could not live in a state beside a Jewish state. And there's no reason why Zionism opposes that. And it doesn't. It's kind of scary to see that get a big round of applause. You know, the idea that Palestinian parents don't bring up their children to love life, right? They're, they've brought up their, their children to be inherently hateful people. And that's why um, this genocidal war against them is essentially justified. I mean, that seems to be what Douglas Murray is suggesting, right? He denies a genocidal war, of course. But the idea that the, the only reason there hasn't been peace in the Middle East is not because uh, the Israelis have a stated aim of settling uh, the entirety of greater Israel. Like, that's literally what the Prime Minister of Israel says he wants when he holds up maps at the UN, which says Israel and it's all the territory, including Palestine, right? No, he's completely blind to that. Oh, no, Israel really want a two-state solution. The only problem is that the Palestinians uh, raise their kids to hate life. Well, if we're paying special attention to the victims of a political project or movement, that would surely be the Palestinians. Now, Unfortunately, there weren't any Palestinians on that panel, but the Israeli journalist Gideon Levy spoke with some real passion on how Palestinians grow up to think about Zionism. Each of you ask yourself, if you would have been born Palestinian and live all your life under the brutal, maybe the most brutal regime today in the world. I saw it. I saw it. When you would wake up in the morning and see your parents beaten and go to sleep at night and troops will come to your home and kidnap your father or your mother in front of your eyes on a daily basis and I know what I'm talking about. Don't tell me about facts, yeah? What do wow. you think you would have felt toward the people who does it to you? What do you see? It has nothing to do with education system. They don't need education system to hate us. Okay, we need... make them oh, hating us. It's a really, really strong, powerful response to basically what Douglas Murray was saying, right? They raise their kids to hate life. No, their kids grow up in a situation where they're denied basic rights by a neighboring country where the only time they see Israelis is when they're sort of security people pointing guns at them or kicking them out of their homes, right? You don't have to teach people like that to hate Israel, they're going to learn that from their experience of having guns pointed at them and their homes knocked down.